Well, we are here again with my good friend Steve Knowles at Newport CNC. Thank you again for having us. Um, again, I'm a little bit chilly, but we're going to fight through this. If I start chattering, just ignore that and keep answering the questions. No I'd day. appreciate it. No uh, so as a segue to what we were working on earlier on that lathe, we've now moved over to your Haas mini mill and some of your other vertical machines where we've previously discussed, um, thanks to COVID, I don't really want to say thanks, but or maybe due to COVID, um, you now have this great opportunity to work on some face mask molds. Is that correct? That's correct, yeah. yeah. And how long have you been working on these now? Um, we're only, this, this week, we just, basically the last couple of days, we've even got the order and started making these parts. Excellent. And I believe you mentioned that uh, cycle time was around two hours on this part. Is that correct? It's about, yeah, probably about between two, two and a half hours. With, this is the first one, so we've fine-tuned that and we've moved it onto, we're going to move it onto the mini mill as well. So. We may have to slow it down slightly because it's not quite as much power as the other mill. Sure. Um, but it shouldn't be far off that. It shouldn't be far off that. And with your experience in programming, you said you began programming around the 80s. Is that correct? Yeah, correct. Yeah. I imagine you'll figure out the right way to get this tooling in this machine. I hope so. I yeah. hope so, yeah. <laughs> and this is this is an aluminum part. Yeah. What type of aluminum? 6082. 6082, which is a little bit softer than the 6061 aluminum. I think 661 is a little bit softer than this. Okay. But I, there's not a lot of difference between them, I don't think. Pretty, pretty equivalent to yeah, one yeah. another. Yeah. Um, and you're doing both male and female parts to this mold. Yeah, we are, yeah. So, Previously discussed, and we don't know a lot of the details about what happens after this, but it looks like it's going to be some form of thermal forming. It's going to heat up some mesh material and then go into the female, and then maybe the male smashes into the heated form of the female that's, mold. Is that as far, correct? As far as I can make out, that's what that's what's going to happen. Typically, yeah. how a lot of the thermal forming works, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what kind of tooling are you using for this type of a project? Um, we're using uh, a Whittier face mill to do the roughing out initially. Then we've got some ITC five flute cutters do the, some of the finishing, and then uh, same ITC ball noses that are doing the actual surfacing over the top. Uh, both great companies. I love both Whittier and ITC. Okay, yeah. Um, I've worked with Georgia for a long time. If she's watching, excellent. Uh, so ITC, uh, you're using Whittier programming about two hours. We're working in aluminum. Um, You've been programming since the 80s, and then we were previously talking before we started recording, and you said this is the second time that you've gone about launching a machine shop. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that, and a little bit about your journey and your story from Precision CNC, Newport CNC? Well, most of the time I've been working for other, other companies, doing, uh, mainly programming. I sort of started off doing an apprenticeship and then went into doing programming in CNC machines. Um, I saw an opportunity to start my own business probably back in the 90s, I think it was about 95. Um, and I went for a few years, but I, it didn't quite work out. I'm, I sort of learned a lot from that, but I went back into working for other companies. Um, was always looking for the opportunity to start my own business again. Um, and then about uh, 12, 13 years ago, that sort of an opportunity arose, and I thought there's a lot of us old folks dying off who have got the skills. Um, they're either dying off or they're retiring. So sure. I thought this might be an opportunity to maybe set my own business up using my own skills and, using, and, and doing that way. So that's what I've done. And it's sort of grown from one machine. Now we've got seven machines here. Excellent. Um, ups and downs. It's not always been plain sailing, as you can the imagine. Roller coaster ride of machining, right? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and especially as what's happened this year, it's just made it even more difficult. But you've just got to keep pushing on and hoping to get through it, really. So I have, yeah, that's excellent. I have two questions based on that. Um, when you first launched your company and then you said, you know, you went on to go work for someone else and then launched this a second time, yeah. what do you think was your biggest lesson? Or what did you learn from your first shot at, uh, at entrepreneurism with your first machine shop? Um, I think I'd stick with it. I mean, the, the first one, I probably thought, I'd probably give up too early. I probably thought, Started the things started to go down a little bit, and I I didn't really try. I I, I probably could have given it another year, um, to, and, and it probably would have proved improved. The second time we we would say we've had ups and downs. So when it does drop down a bit, you've got to remember that it's going to go back up again at some point. You know. Right. Um, and I think that's probably my biggest lesson from it. Is, 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 is that really? Honestly, I think that's great advice for you know the people that are watching. There's so many people out there that you know, maybe have concerns about launching their own thing, the investment yeah. that it costs, or 
find a struggle and give up too early. So yeah. I think that's an excellent advice. Thank you for sharing with our audience. Yeah, that's right. um, the second thing I want to ask is, you mentioned this year has been a unique year. What have you done to kind of balance the roller coaster ride that COVID has brought about for the engineering and for the world uh, as far as you know employment? It's just been very tricky. We, we've we've taken on the sales lady, um, who's sort of brought us in a few a few more customers. And I think that's it. Trying to get our name out there to give us the best opportunity we can. Um, we, we first got involved in the Ventilator Challenge when this came out, so that gave us work for a, for a few months. Um, it's just trying to diversify, really, and trying to get yourself in as many markets as you can. Um, that's the only way to, to that, carry on. That I mean, makes perfect sense. Yeah. And has uh, MTD been helpful in you know, helping you get your name out there? I think so, yeah. They've done a few videos with us, and I think we've picked up customers, and some customers comment and say they've seen us on MTD. So. Any, any sort of marketing you can do is, is a good thing, I think. So back to the part, just super quick before we end this, how many of these are you gonna run? I think we've only got to make eight initially. Um, there's eight of the male molds and eight female molds. Um, there could be more in the future, we don't know. It's just one of those things, you just wait for the phone to ring and hope you get some more come, more stuff come <laughs> sure. through the door.